which um, staff has um, reminded me to remind everyone that the meeting is video and it's audio recorded. All electronic meetings are uploaded by the municipality's YouTube page. And by registering to participate in the meeting by electronic means, you are consenting to have your likeness and comments recorded and posted on YouTube. And I think everyone is aware of that. So roll call, if we just care to run through it for the record. Uh, John Arnold, I'm here. Mary, John I'm here. Matthew John, Bonner. Matthew. Courtney or Hillary? Uh, yes, Courtney Hoy Fox, I'm here. And there. Hillary and Jeff, Jeff Bung. Yes. Are there any others in attendance? Are there any others in attendance that we are aware of? Um, okay, I have no opening um, remarks to make at this point. Um, if anyone else has any remarks they'd like to make at this point, please uh, raise your hand or speak up. Otherwise, we'll move over to any disclosure of uh, pecuniary interest. Uh, are there any, does anyone have any pecuniary interest that should be disclosed? I have none. Okay, we can assume that there are no members having pecuniary interest. Um, delegations, I don't believe we have any delegations today at all, do we? Do we, Courtney and Hillary? I don't think so. No, nothing for today. Okay, then let's move right on into the reason for this, uh, this meeting, and that's the report on the Carter Caulfield Farm. Who would like to, Courtney, are you going to carry that? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, um, and thanks again uh, for meeting short notice uh, for the special meeting, and um, I apologize for um, how late the agenda came out. Uh, we tried our best to get this kind of wrapped up and I know there was a lot of information for the committee to go through in a short period of time. So again, just staff appreciate, appreciate that. And if we need to go through it in more detail, certainly we can do that at the meeting today and any questions or comments or anything we can, we can hash out. So maybe I'll just give a really brief overview of the report. Um, so this is relating to the property 880 Victoria Road South, known as the Caulfield Carter Farm. Um, it's a report for the committee's information to receive it. Um, we're not asking for any direction today on this. It's more of just an update or a, a status report uh, based on the City of Guelph uh, recent council meetings dealing with their real estate assets, this being one of them. Um, so there is a little bit of information that's come out. Of <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. I think there was a bit of feedback there. No, sorry, Courtney. That was me. I, I was finally got my desktop to work. It was refusing to hook up, and I wanted to get off my my little machine. So uh, I apologize for that. Okay. No, thank you. Um, so the this we staff actually met with City of Guelph staff um, a couple weeks ago just to talk about uh, what had transpired at the council meetings and all the ultimate um, resolution of council relating to next steps for um, the stabilization of the Caulfield Carter farm. Um, and so the report outlines uh, the next steps that the city is prepared to take. Um, so they're investing about $110,000 into the rehabilitation or the stabilization really of the house, um, not really doing anything further than just looking to prevent further damage until um, a time where a, a expression of interest can take place to, to look at future uses for the building and, and what would be needed for those for future uses. Um, so that's what the council city council has committed to and it's outlined in the report. Um, and they also, during our meeting with city staff, uh, confirmed that they would be including uh, the Puss Lynch Heritage Committee and Puss Lynch Council um, in the expression of interest and in further discussions as we kind of move along here to see what would be the best use um, for this property. So that's just been outlined in the in the body of the report. And then we have attached as Schedule A the stabilization plan that the City of Guelph consultants prepared. So that was presented to City of Guelph Council as well as part of the staff report. And if, maybe John, if, if there's any questions or comments, staff are here to, to help with that too. 
Yeah, would anyone like to make, jump in at this point, make any comments? It was a pretty extensive um, report that was done at this point. Uh, Mary, I, I do take your point. It would have been um, better, I think, if someone had done a little bit more research on the, the history of the building, because you're right, there's an awful lot of history on the, the building, about the building and, uh, and the site. Um, I'm, I don't want to speak for the, for the committee. Uh, Matt, do you have any comments on this? I'm, I'm, I'm quite frankly impressed that they're prepared to spend some money on it. And I think we support that. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, considering that uh, during my first term of council is when we received the first request from the city of Guelph for a demolition permit, I think we've come a long way. I think this is great. This is, this is an indication that they're again, looking for an after use. Um, after we didn't issue the demolition permit 20 some 20 years ago, um, they started talking about a, a reasonable after use that perhaps had something to do with um, water taking or water protection or something along those lines and, and that disappeared. But it's, this is, it seems like they might be interested in, in something like that again. So I think it's, as you say, this is, this is a good news. It's, and, and it was good to see all the details in those reports. So thank you. Mary, you, I know you made some comments earlier that would you like to reiterate those for the meeting? Yeah, I think that, um, <clears throat> yeah, there are a few errors in the report. Uh, and I, I sent out an email to the effect of one, which was uh, the section 1.1 under introduction and purpose of plan. There is a lot of documentation about this property, which in my mind makes it even more significant. Uh, and uh, the author, uh, for some reason, didn't access that. So uh, if my feedback would be that they should. And then um, as well, then there's uh, an error uh, under 1.2. They've misstated the property into the 1900s. So they're just, uh, you know, these are small errors, but in fact, they, um, I think that they make the property and the report a bit more vulnerable. Um, the other thing I would like to say is that um, I believe this came to us for a number of reasons, one of which was um, it was the perception was that this was already on uh, a municipal register under um, Section 27 of the Ontario Heritage Act, and, and we are actually in the process of doing that. But to me, it uh, underlines how important it is to have these legislative protections in place for our heritage properties. Um, and then the other comment I would have is that I know the city has since the time that it initially asked for permission to demolish has had this property um, kind of mothballed. Uh, it's been over a decade where they've been trying to figure out what to do with it. And I'm not sure uh, how easy it will be to find a purpose for it on site because of their concerns around water protection and um, not introducing septic services and so on and so forth. That's just a comment. Um, and that's it for me, thank you. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, I actually, uh, Courtney and Hillary and I were getting ready for this meeting. We were talking about that and the, the township has a, a pretty good water surveillance group. And there are apparently now, I was totally unaware of this, systems that can be installed in these sensitive locations that are highly protective of the, the, the water table. So it may be that as further investigation goes on, they can actually solve that problem because as you know, we all agreed, a Johnny on the spot is not going to solve the problems if they want to occupy the building. But I think it's, this is a good first step um, in, in perhaps getting this building back into some sort of usable condition. John, do you have any comments? Oh, sorry, Mary, go ahead. Uh, um, I just, I forgot to add one last thing, which was 
I was really very pleased that they um, linked uh, the Brampton, City of Brampton um, property standards guidelines for heritage buildings, which are, are vacant. And they're, they're very clear and they're very specific. And um, they apply to properties that are designated uh, or within a heritage conservation district. And um, I think that these are something that our committee might want to look at down the road uh, because we've had an unfortunate situation happen this year where this sort of guidelines uh, were not followed. Thank, thanks, Mary. And we might wanna make note of that for a future discussion at perhaps our next meeting. I think that's, um, that's and, a great and, point. And just as a corollary, <laughs> and the report is recommending designation mm -hmm. uh, down the road. So I'm sorry, John uh, Levac, but I'll, I've stopped talking now. <laughs> um, John, I think that I'll maybe do it. You know, reading through the material is that I kind of got the impression that the motivation, the main motivation for putting some money into it now and keeping it up. Um, as opposed to pursuing the demolition um, route is the fear of contamination as a result of the demolition. They're worried about asbestos um, and uh, other materials affecting the water uh, supply that, that lies underneath it. Um, it makes me kind of wonder, since there doesn't seem to be any, also there doesn't seem to be any direction as to uh, how that, that building might at some point in the future be occupied that maybe it is just going to continue to just sit there and we may just be starting a new cycle of demolition by neglect with an upfront um, investment just to extend that. Uh, I know it's kind of a pessimistic view, but there didn't seem to be a lot of, maybe I just missed it, um, but there didn't seem to be a lot of um, material in there that made me believe that there was really ever going to be any intent to use that building. That's all I'd add at this point. Mary, I think that your comment about the city of Brampton's guidelines um, could be very relevant in the going forward uh, of uh, you know, this project. But I, I'm inclined to agree with John, um, but perhaps that, that wasn't intended in this initial report. It was more get it stabilized and we'll see where we go from there. I don't, I don't know. I'm not... I hate to be pessimistic about it, but we've all seen the, well, we saw what happens very recently. And um, the, um, yeah, I, I, I understand your pessimism, Johnny. That's, um, well, there was also, <laughs> there was also some material uh, uh, in there talking about the possibility of moving the structure. And I'm thinking, oh, geez. Is that even possible with something like this? Like, could that structure actually be moved and preserved? Uh, Mary, you would, you know, maybe you can comment on that. I, um, it just seems so unlikely, but I, I guess that's not something they, they kind of let that idea go, but um, it was mentioned. I don't know. Is it possible? Um, I can, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it would have to be completely dismantled. I don't, I, I'm, I think. I, I, there are a couple of things here. And one of which is that that property is early and it's in a location that was all about those water resources. So, you know, the site, the siting is important uh, to, to, uproot it from that location and put it down somewhere else is essentially providing a, a, perhaps a residence for someone, but it's taking it out of context. And that, that's not ideal. Um, <laughs> and frankly, um, I, I mean, we're projecting and speculating, but the cost of, remove, of moving that property um, <laughs> I can't even anticipate it, frankly. 
<laughs> I, I, I take your point, Mary. That's that was my reaction to it as well. Was oh my goodness, I think we're we're um, we're moving into the stratosphere with those kinds of uh, of thoughts. Courtney, have you have any further comments on this, or any other committee member have any comments they'd like to make? A question. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have my question would be for staff. I'm not sure if this would be for Madam CAO uh, or, uh, or Hillary. Um, I say CAO? Oh, my goodness. Sorry. <laughs> my Promotion. <bottom> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, no pay with that. <laughs> um, Honored, Councillor Palmer. Thank you. <laughs> oh, so the um, question is, Mary has identified a couple of uh, errors in the report that we received from the city. And I'd like to make sure the city is made aware of those and, and where they could find some additional information. Would you like a motion from this committee um, to have staff send those comments to the city? Would that be helpful? I think that would be great. And it would also give some direction and for Mary to provide us those comments as well so that we have the specifics and then we can certainly do that. Okay, then I'd, I'd be pleased to make that motion that, um, the, that Mary provide the relevant corrections and um, and the uh, additional resources that the city should refer to in this report. I put that on the table. Second. Second. Thanks, Mary. Um, any discussion? If not, I'll call for a vote on. Can we just have the clerk read back the, if, make sure I got the wording right? Is that all right? Sure, go Can ahead. Somebody write it down. I, I got think it, we, got we, it. Got it, we got it recorded. <laughs> yes. Um, so we have resolution 2021-003, that report HER 2021-002 by Courtney Hoytbox be received for information and that Mary Tyvee to provide uh, corrections to the report and additional resources for staff to provide to the city of Guelph. Uh, thank you so much. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Okay. There, there, I, is there any, there's no further comments, I, I don't think. I think we've really, it's kind of a bit of wait and see, is it not, Courtney, to see what they come up with now? And Yes, uh, we'll wait and see for the expression of interest to come in early 2022, and then um, we can go from there. Okay. And if that's all there is concerning the this uh, this report, if we could move on to now, I guess we should really have a resolution to approve the or acknowledge the receipt of the report in its entirety. Should we not? I believe Hillary had that included in her report, but maybe she can just confirm. Yeah, Mr. Chair, that was yeah the one we had read before, but we can definitely get a mover and a seconder for that. So um, I can reread it if you would like. Hillary, was it included? I think it was included in the resolution you just stated, and I think you had a mover and seconder. Yeah. yeah I think so. Okay, okay. Yeah. so we, we, it was included. It, 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 that was an omnibus um, resolution that we put forward on, on, on receiving the report plus the uh, recommendations for correction. Yeah, that's that's right. right. Okay, super. Then we can move on to, the, uh, to item two. Um, the report HER 2021-003, First Nation Acknowledgement Statement for the Heritage Rest, uh, Register. And I think, Courtney, were you carrying that one too or is Hillary doing um, that? Yes, so I can start. And then we also have Glenn Schwendinger, our CAO, on the call as well um, to speak to it. So I can just start, Mr. Chair, and then um, Glenn can also um, assist with this. So. Um, this report is being provided to the committee again for information purposes. Um, it is the uh, proposed First Nations acknowledgement statement that is meant to accompany the Heritage Register and that's um, put forward in the uh, Appendix A, which is the actual draft register with how the statement is going to accompany it. So it's just at the top of the register. Um, so the actual statements included uh, within the report for discussion, we've also included some background on the consultant that the township um, utilized to draft this. Um, and then just as a bit of some information that staff are looking for through discussion of this report is 
um, next steps for the actual draft register. So I know there may be some revisions that need to be made to it. And um, Hillary is actually here to provide the committee with just a, a brief summary of what the public engagement uh, resulted in. And um, if we could have some discussions on that as well, just as part of this report, uh, just to give staff next steps before this ultimately goes to council for, for approval. Okay. So I don't know if uh, we do have Glenn here now. So I, I don't know, Glenn, if you have anything specific that you'd like to, um, any information you'd like to provide or if we should just uh, questions and comments, I'm not sure. You know, I'll just do a, a real, real quick um, overview of it. So we, we were asked to um, uh, come up with a way to somehow acknowledge the, um, the, the First Nations involvement of, of the development um, in, in the area so that it wasn't just, here, here's what we're recognizing in terms of these historical structures, but they, they had a contribution and they, they were a part of it as well. So we, we were asked to find some way to, to incorporate that. So it was quite um, quite interesting. Spoke with the, the consultant who got the information in the report. I won't go over that, um, but um, the the consultant um, worked on a number of land acknowledgements, all kinds of archaeological um, projects. He's worked for First Nations them, themselves on various projects too, and and um, thought that this was a really really interesting approach to take to include that in in the in the registry such as this to to say that hey they they, they contributed to to this as well and and uh, he he thought that. Um, this is a pretty innovative thing and in that um, there's other municipalities that are going to look at this as a, as a good model to, to follow and this is a good step to take to recognize the, the contributions and, and what was achieved as well not just what was here before but um, that, that they had a real meaningful contribution to what was achieved and, and what was being recognized um, so that that's kind of the the what what led to the uh, to the agreement or to the wording sorry and um, yeah, what else? Maybe if there's any specific questions or, or comments, if, if anyone has it, I'll do my best to try and, try and answer them for you. Um, I have a question, um, Mr. Chair. I have a question for- Sorry, sorry, Mary, I, there, we, there we go. I, I lost the screen there for a minute. Okay. Yes, we acknowledge you. <laughs> um, so Glenn, um, my questions are really mostly around phrasing. Um, I, uh, you know, if I was writing this, <laughs> which I'm not, I would want to say the township of Puslich recognizes, not we, because I'm not sure who the we is. But it, the phrase we've been told, actually, there is historical evidence that the Anishinaabe interacted with settlers in a supportive and cooperative manner. And I think that it is, I think that that phrasing um, uh, somehow makes this statement um, a little bit, um, how can I say, a little bit more objective perhaps. Um, and as a historian, <laughs> uh, to me it, it it's just a better way to say that than we have been told because today in the township of Puslinch, I don't know who's telling us. Mm -hmm. Good point, Mary. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any other comments? Yeah, um, on that, that same sentence, the way it's worded, we, um, we have been told that the Anishinaabe interacted with the settlers in a friendly and cooperative manner. It almost implies that the expectation was that they wouldn't. I think that just a slight change to say something like the Anishinaabe and the settlers interacted in a friendly and cooperative manner makes it more of a neutral statement of, of, co of neutral cooperation. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a minor change I'd make there. Mm -hmm. And, and also, um, based on the purpose of the statement that Glenn, that you summarized, the last statement, the, last, the concluding statement here doesn't say that at all. It actually tells me that we kick these people out. No, nothing, you know, we, we're acknowledging that the development that, of the township encroached on the traditional way and it resulted in their displacement. That's hardly a cooperative statement. 
that's a pretty aggressive statement saying we kicked you out. And my question to that would be, is there a possibility of liability when you make a statement like that? Um, I, I put uh, pretty much the exact same question to, to the consultant when, when he provided this. Mm -hmm. And he, he said uh, no based on, on the numerous um, documents that he's worked on. There, there is no liability that, that comes with this. Um, because the liability would, would come to, as, as it was explained to me, the, the liability would come as a result of um, federal or provincial or, or, or crown ownership of lands, and those would be the lands that um, uh, potential claims could come against, that um, lands that are in, in private ownership wouldn't be applicable to this. So that, that's the legalese as it was, was explained to me. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the, the wording of, of being displaced, um, there, there was discussion of does that sound too aggressive or, or um, you know, they, they were um, told to get out of here, don't come back, that, that type of thing. And it's, that wasn't the, uh, the, what took place at all um, from, from the explanation that, that I had received in, in the research that, that, that he referenced. And this is actually similar to um, uh, situations where another um, a group of First Nations that were living in the Aurelia area, and then they they had lands that were similarly used to what what ours are. I'm up in the Muskoka area, and the, the, a parallel thing was taking place there. In that, um, they they essentially uh, lived in a certain area, but then they would migrate to different areas at different times of the year for for hunting and fishing and those. And then when other when when the settlers came in and started doing things in those lands that they traditionally would go in and hunt in, then um, there, there were, you know, there was less game around. There, there wasn't the, the, the food that they were going there for in, in the first place. So it was those actions of, you know, of the settlement. So, um, you know, establishing the, the designated agricultural fields and putting up the, the fences and, you know, the, the, uh, the settlers hunting and things themselves. That um, just resulted in the fact that there, there wasn't as much um, game available from, um, fr from the area for them to still come to the area. So that that's what resulted in them being displaced. It's not that they were chased away or, or anything like that. And, and he, he referenced a number of discussions that he had with regards to, to the Muskoka example, where where people, the, the First Nations that lived in the in the Aurelia area, um, they, they would travel up to Muskoka for hunting and fishing there. And then when that started to be developed for, for cottages and, and resorts and, and things like that, then the same thing happened. They're all the, the fishing and hunting was taking place and, and um, uh, the, the game simply wasn't there. So then the, those First Nations stopped going to that area. It wasn't that they were forced out or told you're not allowed to come here and, and that type of thing. It was, it was simply that the, the, the reason or the purpose for them to going to that location wasn't as productive as it was before. So, so that's why they ended up being displaced from it. Okay, fair enough. Um, th that's quite an explanation <laughs> for one line. Yeah. Um, but words like encroached, um, are, are very strong words. And to me, a word like that shouldn't really be there. Displacement, uh, don't like that one either, but encroach definitely. But I, I guess the last question I'd ask you about this, um, is this statement going to be reviewed um, by legal counsel? Um, uh, uh, one legal counsel that, that actually specializes in indigenous affairs um, before this actually becomes a public statement? Um, that that wasn't the intent, from my understanding. No, no, we we were relying on the uh, on the expertise of the archaeologist who put it together, mm -hmm. and based on on his preparation of multiple ones of, of these on on various other projects as well. We were we were going with that. You're talking about Martin Cooper, right? Yes. Uh, is he indigenous? I don't believe he's even indigenous, is he? No, no, he's not. Okay, um, I'll just give you the example of the Montreal Canadiens. I don't know if you heard that story but they came up with an interesting statement and they thought it would be a good idea to read it uh, prior to every Montreal Canadiens hockey game. And as it turns out, they kind of got it wrong in identifying um, exactly what First Nations um, were, were the original um, occupants of the land. And uh, they create a lot of controversy within First Nations. And um, I, I really think it would be a good idea to have um, Indigenous specialized legal counsel review this before we actually make this kind of a statement because uh, 
the explanation you just gave, which is a good explanation, is not one that people are going to see. They're going to read exactly what we've said. We haven't said much. We've just said things with a lot of implications. So that would be my only advice. I, I think we really should have this reviewed by a legal specialist. Uh, that's it. Thank, <clears throat> thank you, John. I think your points are well taken. And I agree with you. I really don't like that word encroached. Um, it may have altered their traditional way of life, but those are really powerful words. And I, I'm honestly, you know, I, I know this chap has, Martin has um, worked with a lot of other statements of this type. And that's not to say, that's, that doesn't tell me that it's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I um, have my hand up. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Mary, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm watching the screen, sorry. All right. Um, well, you know, the lands in this area were part of the Between the Lakes Treaty, which is treaty number three, which was signed in 1792. And the Mississauga Anishinaabe were signed that treaty. And what it did in the British government's mind was give them the right to survey these lands and sell them um, through government grants to settlers. The Mississauga believed that they would still have hunting and fishing rights on these lands, but that was not the uh, condition that was um, part of the treaty um, as far as the British were concerned. So it's not that the agricultural development of the township encroached upon these First Nations. It was the selling off of these lands and the notion of individual land ownership, which was antithetical to these hunter and gathering groups who moved and who had a much broader understanding of land ownership within a group. And so once these lands were sold off in 100 or 200 acre lots, then these First Nations were suddenly on private property rather than common property. And it's, you know, when I read that, everybody, Glenn and everyone, I think, well, what if it had been some other kind of development? <laughs> you know, uh, we acknowledge that the agricultural development, in fact, it was the settlement process uh, that encroached on their life. It was the treaties and the, and the surveying and the settlement process. And, um, and what you see as, as Puss Lynch develops in the 1820s, 1830s, 1840s, is that the Anishinaabe presence is, is reduced to the point whereby I think the 1840s, they're sequestered over um, by 10 Mile Creek um, in Burlington because they've lost access. They've lost access to the lands. It's not that their, their wildlife is, is any more scarce. It's simply that land ownership has changed. That's my point of view anyway. Thanks, Mary. No, your point's very well taken, I think. And you've done an awful lot of studying on this, so um, I think your comments should merit some thought. Um, any other any other comments? Um, Can I ask a question, Matt? Mr. Matt would you? Yes. Hello. Yes, please, Matt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Mr. Schwindinger, for that excellent explanation. Um, but I I think is it the the Mary started out by asking questions about the. The, the language in terms of maybe the softness of it in terms of we've been told and or the we statement it, it, are those the sorts of things that if if the committee had um was able to provide some historic proof about those it could be changed from um, we've been told to something a little stronger and is it a problem to change it from we to the township of puss Lynch, since it's a township of puss Lynch document does that are these little changes possible at those points? For, for sure. Um, what, what I think would, would be good um, is uh, 
you know, if there, there's certain um, refinements or like you said, there's some, some information to, to support, like another word going in or, or something like that, if you could just provide that in, in the uh, recommendation in, in, a, in a resolution, then, then we can take that forward for sure and, and take a look at that. Because it's, if, if we definitely, if we, we, we can improve it, I, I, I can see, see the point there about the, the we, we've heard, it'd be nicer to refer to, um, uh, you know, a specific instance or, you know, specific reference or document. But from, from what I understand, some of this came to from, you know, just um, the discussions with individuals in, in the, the municipality too, and, and what, right. what knowledge was passed down through, through their respective families and things too. So that, that might contribute to the, you know, we have heard component, but yeah, for, for sure, you, you, you could. So I understand that's, that's the, the, the reason behind that, I guess, is without definitive proof that they're trying to be careful of, of the language they use. So, yes. okay. And, and the other comments, um, is there a way we could have those looked at as well? Or is it, so are you comfortable taking the comments that were made today back and do you need a resolution to that effect or how would you like us to, to work with this now? Yeah, just so that we make sure that we reflect the, uh, the comments, not that we, uh, misunderstood or misinterpreted something if, if you could put that in a resolution we could definitely take that um take take that back um have another look at it um ask uh, the, the consultant for you know what, what's their thoughts given this you know additional information or additional perspective to, to see if something is, is reworded and then um uh, pr provide that back to, to council for for their consideration when, when they're looking at finalizing the document i think that'd be great you know you, this this committee could provide that that input and give, give you know, their, their, their opinion, their, their uh, recommendation to council and then, then council can make their decision. Excellent. Yeah. So then the feedback of this committee will be, will be taken into consideration in the development of the final statement then. Yes. Yeah. So basically we can say Excellent. that we started off with the, this draft, here's the, um, the input that we received uh, in comments from the committee. Uh, we took a look at those comments and resulting from those comments here, here is what is proposed. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, thanks, Matt. Very good points. Um, I'm just, I, I think your your last point was really the um, important one. Um, I, I I wasn't making notes on the suggestions that were made by the other members of the committee. Um, Hillary or Courtney, did did you get that the areas that we have concerns about? Did, did were you able to note that down and that we can put a resolution together that covers those items. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, if I may, I do have some notes um, regarding the concerns that the committee has with the statement. Okay, uh, do you want to, do we want to, uh, um, if there's no further comments, then we could uh, call for a resolution if we do what we did the last time, and that's in, incorporate the uh, acknowledgement of receipt of this with the suggestion of uh, Changes that we we are items we are suggesting be looked at and perhaps changed. Uh, would that be appropriate? If I could, Mr. Chair, I just in the introduction um, of, of this item, I believe staff mentioned that there might be some some feedback from the public process or some changes that, to the registry itself. So maybe we can deal with the two separately. We can have a resolution regarding the the, the statement and then move on to complete. Oh. Sorry, 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 I just need to decline this. I thought I'd turn my phone off. <laughs> I do the same all the time. It's okay. Right. Thank God, Mary. I thought it was me again. Oh, Lord. I was looking around as to what was beeping and bonging there. Um, John, two resolutions of that makes sense. Sorry, Mary, go ahead. Yeah, just, I'm sorry, just before we leave this. Um, so there is written and oral evidence. Um, by these early Euro-Canadian settlers about their interaction with the Anishinaabe Mississauga. So, so definitely we have been told <laughs> has, uh, has a historical reference. And I, I think that we don't have to worry anymore about that being a bit anomalous. It's, it's historical evidence, All right? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to make sure everyone understood that. And I think that's what the, the resolution will address. 
Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, because we have been told should become a historical evidence because mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. you know, I agree with you completely. So I'm not quite sure how to phrase the, uh, the, the first, I guess the first resolution should be that we have received this report for information purposes. Would that be correct? Mr. Chair, if I may, um, if we are drafting the first resolution about the committee forwarding on their comments to council, if we could possibly do make that the resolution and leave it a little open ended, because I think some of Mary's comments are very detailed. And I think staff would appreciate receiving that in an email from Mary so that you can provide that all to the consultant. So rather than trying to capture it in the resolution, if the first resolution could simply be that um, the that staff forward on committee comments to the consultant um, for for a review and to form part of the report to council for consideration. Something something along those lines. Great idea. Okay. Um, I would move that sorry, resolution. Uh, can I ask a question, uh, Courtney? Should I circulate my comments to the committee, or can you can they be circulated through Hillary so that there may be feedback from other committee members, or is that um, does that need to take place in a, a meeting? I think we're going to try to um, if if they're circulated. I think they're circulated without comment. So what we want to avoid is uh, interactions yeah. through email with the committee, but. Certainly, if you would like the committee to, to see them, that's okay, but we'll just limit the okay. email conversation. All right. All right. And um, I'm assuming that's a ASAP. Yes. Um, if we could manage to get this on the uh, November 24th agenda to council, but we also have a meeting in December. So, no, I'll get them for that. What's the date for that for, to, for the township to receive the comments? Um, I'm just trying to look because then Glenn will need a bit of time to work with um, Mr. Cooper as well. So maybe we do aim for the December meeting, uh, which is in which is the 15th of December. Um, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Mary. Oh, you'll want them from me before that, right? To, to, well, for meet, sure. Meet with Mr. Cooper. So Glenn, maybe if you could speak a little bit. I'm, I'm not sure of the of Mr. Cooper's um, okay. time well, on you this. Know what? I'll have them done by, I'll have them done within a week. Okay. I might have them done within a day. <laughs> I'll have them done within a day. Perfect. That, that would be great to give us as much time as, as we can. Okay. And then, yeah, we can target that uh, December meeting like uh, Courtney okay. referenced. That'd be great. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, Mary. Um, back to you, Courtney. Do you, you want to... Hey. Phrase the, uh, the the resolution, please. Hillary, did you did you copy that down? Did you want to did you have it, or do you need me to repeat? I think I have it, Courtney. Um, okay. If I stumble through it, though, uh, definitely feel free to jump in and correct it. <laughs> okay, so we do have one resolution for this particular item um, that the Heritage Committee provide feedback on the First Nations acknowledgement statement, uh, and for staff to forward on the comments to the consultant and provide to council at the December meeting. Thank you. Do I have a someone? Will, will someone please move that? That resolution. Mary, thank you. Second. Second. Thanks, John. No, any further discussion? If not, we'll have a I'd call for the vote now. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. Um, I'm not sure that what do we need another resolution at, uh, on this one? I think that that covers it, doesn't it, at this point in time? I think, Mr. Chair, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, we were just looking to have um, our secretary review the results of the public engagement. And then we do have a little bit of direction from the committee we're looking for with respect to any revisions to the draft register. Okay. Did you want a resolution to that effect? We'll need one, but perhaps if it's all right with you, Mr. Chair, if, um, if Hillary could review that uh, public consultation just with the committee, and then we can talk a little bit about um, the results of that and the revisions that may be needed. Great. Thank you. Hillary, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so just a quick summary of the public engagement um, involving our draft heritage registry. Uh, so Council was presented with the draft heritage register on March 24th. 
Uh, towards the end of March slash early April, uh, the draft heritage registry was further revised uh, by the subcommittee um, and then it was further completed. On April 30th, 107 letters were sent out to property owners explaining uh, that their property was proposed to be on the register. The letter included a description and historical significance of the property and owners were notified of a public information session being held in May. The draft register was then provided on the township website and more information and frequently asked questions were provided on the township's Engage Post Lunch website. Public reaction to the register was generally very positive. We received correspondence back from nine owners just generally looking for clarification information. The public consultation meeting was held on May 26th at 7 p.m. Uh, the deputy clerk provided a presentation which further explained uh, the Heritage Act and the significance of listed properties. Um, lastly, we received one phone call from a property owner who explained that they did not want to be on the register. Thank you. Um, did they give a reason as to why they did not wish to be on the register? Uh, I'm just curious. Yeah, Mr. Chair, they did not. Um, I did have a phone call with this resident um, and explained sort of what it meant to be on the register and the owner was very insistent that uh, his property be excluded. Okay. Any comments from any of the committee members on this? Mary? Um, well, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, my, my question is then, do we remove it from the register? And if so, which property is it? So I can help a little bit with the um, whether or not it, it needs to be removed from the register. And, and I think we are looking for some feedback from the committee on this to help advise council um, and give some perspective on the, for some context to the property. Um, so it's on Gore Road and it's the John Stewart House. Sorry, I'm just getting the name of it again here. Um, bear with me for just one moment. I apologize for interrupting. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to head out. I have another call in, in uh, two minutes here that I'm supposed to be planning. I, I apologize, but hopefully I was able to answer your questions on that one matter. I'll leave the rest to uh, to the others here. Thank you, Glenn. Appreciate it. Thank you. Comments. So it was, um, it's 6830 Gore Road, the John Scott House story, not John Stewart. Um, and so really, uh, council does have the option to include the property on the register. Um, notify the property owner within 30 days uh, that they have been uh, listed with non-designated status. Um, the property owner would then have the option to file a formal objection to the clerk within 90 days, and they would need to be providing you know, the reasons for their objection with all the relevant facts. And then ultimately, um, this is a council decision, uh, whether it is removed or not, after they've heard the objection with the reasons. Um, now, because it's not designated, it's undesignated on the on the register is what the intention would be. Um, the decision of council is is ultimately not appealable to the LPAT, or I guess it's um, the a different abbreviation for that uh, appeal board now. But it, it does become appealable to the LPAT in the event that council does choose to officially re designate it. So. It's really, we're looking for some feedback from the committee at this point, and likely there needs to be another conversation with the property owner to maybe if, if there wasn't clear understanding about what being a non-designated property on the register means and the limitations that it provides. Um, but those are kind of the options. We, there's still the ability to include it um, and go through that process to, to hear from the, from the property owner with the objection um, in a formal way, or if it's, if it's uh, ultimately the committee thinks, you know, maybe there isn't a, a need to include it, then that could be given to council as well for consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Courtney. Matt, do you have any comment on this? I mean, you're a longstanding member here. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I think 
I would like to take the approach of maybe reaching out once more. Um, maybe more senior staff could reach out. So it has a little bit more, nothing, sorry, um, Hillary, nothing against junior staff, but then they feel they're speaking closer to the top. Um, and it, I don't know, sometimes that makes a difference, not in a threatening manner, but in a, um, you know, trying to understand before it goes before council against their will um, kind of way, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to necessarily i'm not as comfortable putting it on there against an owner's will at this point understanding that owners can change and if we earmark it um if the property changes the new owner could be approached and it could be added again in the future um so that would be my kind of preference on, on how to approach this um if that works for the rest of the committee mary any further comments to um, so it sounds to me as if you were able to explain to the property owner that the only encumbrance uh, on them by being included, by their property being included, is that a longer period of time to issue a demolition permit, but that, that that's all that is required of them. Uh, is that correct? Yes, Maria, that's correct. Yeah. Hmm. Um, well, uh, you know, I'm obviously of two minds <laughs> and one is what, one of which is, um, it might behoove us to explain in further detail why it's on the list, uh, rather than uh, what I have here, which is 10 words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and to reassure them that it will not prevent them from altering, renovating, or anything except tearing it down within 10 days. So uh, could we perhaps um, reinitiate some correspondence with them? Is it, well, that's, uh, I guess that's all I can think of at this point. And I, I agreed, I don't, I don't want people to be in a hostile position on this list with their properties. And I'm pleased to know that it appears to be just one property owner on a list of 107. Thanks, Mary. John, do you have any comments? Well, uh, I respect what Matt and Mary, what your collective points, which are seemingly identical are, <laughs> but since it is only one out of 107, would there be any harm in just respecting the property owner's request and just taking it off the registry? And as Matt suggested, just keeping the property in mind um, and uh, if and when there's a, an ownership change to um, go through the registration process with the new owner instead of taking up a new battle right now. Because there's gonna be at least, I don't know what percentage chance of um, the second round of appeal to the property owner is gonna be, but I'd say it's at least 50% chance that, well, although it's probably more like 90% chance that they are still gonna say, no, thank you. Um, I think the expeditious route might be to just drop it for now. Just an idea. If I could ask a question on, on that, Mr. Hey. Chair. Yes, uh, thank you, John. Yes, uh, yes, Matt, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, John. That's, uh, I, you know, that's, so what, what I'm, what it makes me think of or what I think I hear there is instead of staff reaching out as a second attempt to, um, to encourage them to stay on, that staff like, do a, a recontact of the resident to confirm their desire to take it off prior to taking it off. Um, so it's less threatening, but it's acknowledging their desire to have it taken off. And in that conversation, it opens the door. Um, does that make sense? Would that fit with what you're trying to achieve there? Oh, that wouldn't hurt. That would just be one phone call or one letter. And yeah. um, it keeps the door open. Um, but I wouldn't, uh, my, my feeling is property owners, regardless of the status of their property, 
do have rights and they do, they're entitled to their own thoughts. Yep. And, you know, as heritage people, we may not necessarily agree with them. You know, Mary, you, you know, raised a good point on paper. Being on this register means very, very little. It's just changes the duration of a possible demolition. But in the mind of, you know, someone, maybe an elderly person, um, and keeping in mind what, how heritage is actually perceived in the, in the broad media, their decision is probably final. They've read enough stories about heritage nightmares in Guelph and whatnot. Um, why beat them over the head? But Matt, you've got a good idea, a casual confirmation that it's about to come off with a gentle reminder that there really are no implications of staying on. It might get them to change their mind, they have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. But um, so just keeping your eye on the ownership of the property so that we can um, uh, go back on an ownership change to, uh, to relist it would probably be the, the, the approach I would take if it was my call exclusively. Hey, thanks, John. Any further comments? Mm -hmm. So do we have a consensus with the committee then that we're going to recommend that the property, the property owner be gently approached one more time and informed that they, um, yes, we'll respect their wishes and take it off the registry and just leave it at that. Is that the uh, consensus of the committee? Mm. Okay. Courtney or Hillary, I'm not sure. Hillary, are you doing all the draftsmanship here? I appreciate that. Yes, uh, for, in terms of the resolution. Okay, so do we, do you want to frame a resolution um, around this? Uh, yeah. Need resolution for that, please. Uh, so that report HER 2021-003 First Nations Acknowledgement Statement for the Heritage Register, uh, presented by Courtney Hoytbox, be received for information, and that staff reach out to the owner of the property on Gore Road um, to inquire if they would still like to remain on the Heritage Registry. And it may, would someone move that, please? Move John, seconded. Yeah, Mary, I was going to say you moved your hand. You seconded it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, any further discussion? Yeah, I, I did. <laughs> okay, Matt. One more, pro one more property I'd like to discuss. Um, and just wonder um, if we can include it in, the in this resolution as well. Does that make sense, staff? Yep, one more property to include in the resolution. First, I'll cancel on this. Okay, I, I just want to discuss the um, John Little House. Um, on the registry, it's listed as being at the rear lot nine, concession three. Um, but I provided staff with a map earlier uh, this morning showing that um, on, on the municipal mapping system, all the buildings are on front lot nine, concession three. And the, ad, the municipal address shown in the registry gives it as, I think it's 6707 concession road four. Um, but the county that owns the property, which is the Green Legacy Nursery, lists the address as being on county road 34, which is the front lot nine. So I just, I, I wanna, confirm with staff if, if we should change this or not to, to line up with how the county describes where it is. Certainly, Councillor Bomber, we can take that back and, and look at it and confirm with the details you've provided and just make sure it's accurate before it goes to council. Okay, thank you so much. If we could just add that to the resolution, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, and then the final part of the re resolution is um, and for staff to amend the description of the John Little House on the Heritage Registry. Okay, thank you. With that addition to the resolution, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. Um, let me see, are there any other items that we need to cover? Courtney, Hillary? I think we've got everything as that we wanted to. Yep. If, there are, if there is no further business, I would ask for a motion to adjourn or 
terminate the meeting. Uh, that the Special Heritage Committee meeting hereby adjourns at 4.05 p.m. Thank you. Mary, you're moving that? Uh, yeah, Hillary, do we need to move that or is... Oh. Yeah, we both have. Yeah. Okay, then I move it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Second. Second. John, John LeBac. Uh, no discussions, I don't believe on that. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. I move that the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, staff. Thank you, Mary and John. Yeah, thank special you. thanks to, to staff. I think they've done a tremendous job on, on this. There's a couple, these things could be very tricky, but I, yeah. I think they've done a great deal of work on it and thank you so much for it. Mm -hmm. Thanks very okay. much, everyone. Okay, our next meeting is January the 10th, unless something is uh, comes up in the interim. And uh, hopefully we'll see everyone then. Thank you. Okay. Bye, Take folks. Bye-bye.